Welcome to Tech Farming Express. Today we are sitting with a visionary and the CEO of IGO Group of Companies, India's leading farming conglomerate. And today we are going to speak a big topic of scale of Indian farming sector in India and all over the world. Sir, thank you for joining us, sir. Hi, Akhil. To begin with, how could you describe the current scale of Indian agriculture sector in terms of reach, employment and output? Yeah. See, Indian farming sector uh, is looking very bright. Oh yeah, of course, in the next five years, we are looking at a $3 trillion economy. That is huge, which is $3,000 billion, which is the highest by any industry going to be in India. So it looks very good. If you're talking about that volume of turnover, obviously, this sector is going to create the highest number of jobs. And India is producing the maximum number of agri-graduates in the whole world because we have the maximum number of agri-colleges and agri-engineering colleges. So we are producing the highest number of agri-graduates and agri-engineering graduates. So there's a lot of agri-engineering projects that are going to happen. Huge volumes of food is going to get produced. That is why we are talking about a $3 trillion economy. And Indian farming sector will comprise of Indian agri-sector, livestock uh, sector and uh, fisheries sector. So all put together, we are going to get a $3,000 billion industry for the next five years. So it's the best uh, job creating sector. So if uh, students who wanted to pursue a very good career, I think agri-engineering or agri-graduation is going to be the trend. Despite being one of the largest farming economics, what are the core challenges Indian farmers face today at the grassroots level? See, Indian farming economy is in a transition stage uh, where we are getting into organized farming all along. Uh, we have been a farming economy where it is mostly rural based. Okay. Mm. And uh, farming is, was a traditional profession. Mm. And you, you, we found that not much upgrades have happened in all other industries. If you look at an automobile industry or any industry, textile industry, a lot of upgrades have happened over the years. But farming sector, yes, uh, with the modern farming opening up and tech farming opening up, now Indian farming sector is looking at upgrades. You find entrepreneurs who are coming in and doing farming. So traditional small and big size farmers already exist. But now you find after COVID, there's a huge segment of entrepreneurs who are coming into farming. So these entrepreneurs bring in technical expertise they're bringing in and they come with a good capital. They have marketing strategies also. So these are the essential things in farming. So you should have very good capital infrastructure and also labor capital to do farming and technical knowledge. Then after you produce all these goods, you should have good marketing skills to market this product. Also. So with a lot of entrepreneurs coming into agriculture and I call them agripreneurs, you know, with the upsurge of agripreneurs, obviously when we're looking at a three trillion economy for the next five years, obviously these number of people are going to form this economy so India's reach of Indian farming goods is going to be huge. And we have, we have the highest populated country in the whole world and we have a good landmass for farming. So a lot of advantages are there for Indians, Indian market for farming. Yes. With over 60% of rural India dependent on farming, do you think we are using the full potential of land and labor resources? Yes, we are using uh, almost full potential of uh, land. But only thing is the efficiency has to improve. Say on an average with the current data available, uh, Indian farming on an average is producing a revenue of 77,000 rupees per acre per year. That's pretty low actually because 77,000 per year is a very low income. But if you look at modern farming like tech farming or precision farming, whatever you call in different names, modern farming can give you seven from 6 lakhs to up to 10 lakhs very comfortably uh, by doing various uh, precision farming activities, by getting into horticulture crops which are on the rice. Those type of crops give you 6 to 10 lakhs a year. So imagine when your efficiency and your throughput is sh shifting from 77,000 rupees per year per acre to 6 to 10 lakhs per year per acre. That's the shift we are looking at. So that, that will make farming one of the most sought out profession in India and farming will no more be a, a moral activity or a cultural activity. That is how it has been kept. So you will find farming is the most productive and it's a big revenue giving activity. 
because the whole world will look at indian farming goods in a big way because we are very very cost effective uh, production economy in farming we are not a expensive uh, economy in farming so the whole world will look at our produce because our produce will come at a cheaper cost now for your question about uh, uh, introduction of technicalities uh, in agriculture in farming in india yes uh, with agri pronos coming in with the government giving organized schemes and bank uh, professionals are approving uh, loans for farms which are technically sound for precision farming projects because more of nature oriented projects that's for big time farmers so farmers who have got more than 25 acres of land they can afford to have natural farming yeah. uh, and india as a whole is divided into uh, different segments of uh, farmers right now and in future i will not call it as farmers because agri pronos they will be called as agri pronos because with a modern education and the input they look to look out towards farming is changing a lot because globally every farming is moved towards a tech farming sector india will also move india's transition to tech farming sector has started already yeah. how is modern technology like sensors drones and ai reshaping traditional indian farming yeah modern farming in india right now is in a very initial phase uh, we are talking about uh, organized drip irrigation itself is a modern farming practice and with power uh, if you look at you get free current uh, for 2 to 3 hours on an average across india mm. because we have been farming uh, across india in all states so on an average that is there so if you have generators uh, i think it can support modern farming mm. uh, so indian farming at right now is in a stage where if you use drip irrigation and if you use uninterrupted power supply that itself is in a modern farming stage yeah. the next farming stage is you use all the sensors to monitor data like temperature humidity uh, the humidity temperature i have already said then the light intensity these factors can be automatically monitored through the sensors and solutions are provided automatically uh, ideal condition microclimate conditions can be created so these are the modern uh, farming techniques what role do private companies like igo agritech farms play in expanding agriculture on a national scale yeah see if you look at igo agritech farms as a whole we are a farming conglomerate we are uh, india's leading one of the leading farm engineering brand and leading farming consultancy brand. so what we do is suppose somebody has got a land anywhere in india so they when they approach uh, igo group immediately a survey team is sent to their land right so uh, we ask our customers whether farming can be done in lands which are outside which are indoors also in rooftop spaces so all we require is a space yeah. whether it can be outdoor space or it can be indoor space or a rooftop space so if a customer is has having a combination of three say he has got 5 acres of uh, land some 2000 square foot of indoor space which is free he can use it for indoor farming and then some 2000 square foot of say rooftop space all these can be used for farming right for example a 500 square foot uh, mushroom farm if you give us 500 square foot we can generate revenue up to 4 to 5 lakhs a year that's amazing for a 500 square foot so we give combination of things. so once our survey team goes in uh, checks their land we we test the soil we test the water water and for various parameters and then we give them long term crops short term crops all put together right fruits vegetables greens micro greens and all in indoor space we we do uh, air like mushrooms or uh, saffron uh, those type of uh, exotic crops can be done in rooftop space yes a combination of uh, hydroponics can be done you know hydroponic greens and micro greens can be grown so there is a market for it and another advantage is india as a whole is moving towards a health diet market yeah right so you have modern uh, crops like hydroponic crops coming in greens are coming in in a big way right and polyos farm is taken up in a big way so polyos crops are also making to the dining tables of indians so with health conscious indians obviously you will have high revenue producing crops and when you farm this crops you make very very high yield
At IG Agritech, you have worked closely with the thousands of farm managers. What changes have you witnessed in farmers mindset or productivity after adopting your model? Yeah, see we are now working on a module of 25,000 farm managers for the next two years and 25,000 projects across the country. So we are talking about 25,000 farm managers and uh, 25,000 plus uh, agri engineers who will be engaged in various projects across the country because we wanted to be big time you know participating in the 3 trillion drive uh, farming drive so we were started working on this for the last 5 years post the covid where we accumulated so much of data so we we are working towards this uh, five, 3 trillion dollar economy so obviously we are in a progressive path to create our ipo also okay so the, so that a big future can be given to our uh, farm managers or people in our company if they do three years of service in indian markets they will also be placed abroad so farming companies from india will have a huge markets abroad okay because they also need uh, they are also into tech farming and all but only thing is indians will be most preferred because we produce as i said earlier highest number of agri graduates right so these agri graduates with three years of experience uh, tech farming in India with tech farming, farming experience, if they go and get placed in uh, projects abroad, you know, that is going to be the revolutionary, uh, you know, stage, future for uh, agri-graduates. See, there was a time, there was an IT boom and this is the time for the next five years, there is a farming boom. So, the farming graduates will be the most sought out people in the whole planet. Many young people are moving away from the farming. Do you think will bring the next generation back to the land? See, there, there was a time. But now, uh, many youngsters are moving into farm. Yes. Because, because the stage is reversed. Because that is a global scenario. That is the scenario in India also. With tech farming, with government schemes, so many schemes coming in, you find more educated, graduated Indian youth getting into farming. That is why we are generating 25,000 jobs for the next two years. What's your vision for the Indian agriculture sector in next 5 to 10 years? As I already said, the vision is very clear. There is a big uh, boom going to happen. So we want to be a part of this boom, uh, whether it is going to be agri farming, livestock farming or fishery farming or food processing industries. So uh, since India as a whole is moving toward a healthy diet economy, yes. right now a lot of awareness is there thanks to internet, uh, penetration in India is very high. And uh, UPI payments, of, uh, yeah, transactions, uh, it makes it easier for youth from rural segments, you know, to have a feel about this healthy diets and things. So obviously there has to be a lot of production which has to happen to keep up the space. And as you know, India has got the highest, pop is the highest populated yes. country. So with the highest population and the highest number of youth populations. So obviously this health uh, is a prime importance for them and the core uh, importance for health is going to be the healthy diet. So there is going to be a huge market for producing this healthy diet. Yes. For small farmers and agri startups watching this, what would be your message on how to scale their efforts effectively? See for uh, uh, startups you know, or uh, uh, graduates who are starting farms, I think they can get support from established farming companies because you need to construct projects there's a lot of engineering involved and you have to maintain the project so a lot of agronomy is involved there then post harvest management so you need to sell your product so you should have a good tie up right so it's a combination of uh, construction of a right project maintenance of this project good agronomy experience and a good sales experience so if you have all this definitely your venture is going to succeed so my advice to the right now the new on for agri pronos have a good tie up uh, with established very organized brands and move forward i think obviously they they have a good time ahead finally why is it important for ceos and leaders in agriculture to connect directly with the farming community see any business uh, the ceos has to connect with their customers right yes. so I rather believe in we should look at collaborations rather than thinking them as our customers. We should think them like our partners, collaborate them. What they don't have, they have something 
uh, what an established brand doesn't right or has so if you collaborate with these entrepreneurs and give them the much needed support so obviously that's a deadly competition and with the indian market farming market on the rise these are the collaborations which should happen which should happen which we already are doing in terms of joint ventures right franchisee farming so a win win uh, type of a module will really work thank you sir thank That's you akil uh, those were uh, real good questions yeah, okay. in tune with what is required for the farming industry okay.